This is lesson 4-5, which is solving rational equations. Our essential question is, how can you solve rational equations and identify extraneous solutions? Okay, so the first one is we're just solving. So we're going to, um, we want to multiply both sides by the denominator here. So x plus 4 on both sides. So that way it cancels on this side. So then we have 1 equals 2x plus 8. Then we subtract the 8 from both sides. So negative 7 equals 2x. Divide by 2. So we get negative 7 over 2. With rational functions, and you're going to see why in a couple slides here, you always want to make sure you plug the number back into your original problem and make sure it doesn't cause a problem. So if I plug in negative 7 halves right there for x, it's okay, it doesn't cause us to divide by zero, so that is our solution. Oops. There we go. Okay, so on the next one, we're gonna do the same thing, multiply by the denominator. So we're gonna multiply both sides by x minus three. That cancels over here, so I get one equals five x minus 15. Add 15 to both sides, divide by five, we get 16 fifths. Again, plugging in 16 fifths to our equation is not going to cause a problem, so it is our solution. Okay, so example two is solving a work rate problem. So it says Arthur and Cheyenne can paint a wall in six hours when working together. Cheyenne works twice as fast as Arthur. How long would it take for Cheyenne to paint the wall if she were working alone? Okay, the way we wanna set these up is we wanna always have our items on the top and the time on the bottom. So we're gonna do walls over hours, and we're going to set up, we know that Cheyenne plus Arthur equals together. Okay, so together we know they can paint one wall in six hours, so we can set up that fraction. Now, here's the part that it can be a little bit confusing. We know that Cheyenne works twice as fast as Arthur. So let's say, that Arthur can paint one wall in X hours, okay? We, we don't know how many hours, but we do know that Cheyenne, if she's working twice as fast as Arthur, she could paint two walls in X hours. So then we have this equation that needs to be solved. So we can multiply, we wanna get a common denominator. Our common denominator would be six X. So we're gonna multiply this fraction top and bottom by 6, and this one top and bottom by 6, and this one by x. With equations like this, so in the previous lesson we were just simplifying expressions, but if you have an equal sign and you get the denominator the same, you can cross it off. So now I have 12 plus 6 equals x, or 18 equals x. Now, always with these real-world problems, you need to think back to what, how we set this up and what that x represents. So the x really represents how long it takes Arthur to paint one wall, but it's how long it takes Cheyenne to paint two walls. So, but we want to know how long would it take Cheyenne to paint the, the one wall alone. So it would actually be nine hours for her to paint one wall alone because 18 is how long it takes her to do two. Okay, now we're talking about extraneous solutions. So we're going to similarly, like what we just did on the last one, I'm going to factor first. So this would be x plus, sorry, x minus 5 and x minus 3. So we need to multiply each fraction by the part that it's missing. So you'll notice that on the right-hand side here, we have x minus 5 and x minus 3. This first fraction needs an x minus 3. And this second fraction needs an x minus 5. And since the new denominators are all the same, we can cross them off. And then we can write down here what we have. We have x minus 3 plus, I'm going to distribute the x here, x squared minus 5x equals 2. So now we can tell this is quadratic. So we want to get it all on one side equal to 0. So this would be x squared minus 4x, then we subtract the 2 over there, minus 5. 
Then if we factor this, this would be x minus 5 and x plus 1. So then we would have our two solutions would be x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. This is where we introduce what's called an extraneous solution. So an extraneous solution is a solution that we get, like when we solve it all out. However, it doesn't work if I plug it back into my original equation. So if you look at the original equation, we know that x can't be 5 and x can't be 3 because that would cause us to divide by 0. So that means that 5 is extraneous. And so our only solution in this case is negative 1. Okay, so this one, we want to get all the denominators the same. So 7 is not written as a fraction, but we know it's just 7 over 1. So the common denominator here will be x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply this top and bottom by x minus 2. Then we can cross off the denominator, and we have 5x equals 7x minus 14 plus 10. So that would be if we get the x's on one side, this would be negative 2x equals negative 4, or x equals 2. Well, we can tell by this problem, if I were to plug in 2, it would cause a problem. It would cause us to divide by 0. So 2 is not a solution. It's extraneous. So that means our answer would be no solution. Okay, so our last example here is a real world problem. It's a rate problem. It says paddling with the current in a river, Jake traveled 16 miles. Even though he paddled upstream for an hour longer than the amount he paddled downstream, Jake could only travel six miles against the current. In still water, Jake paddles at a rate of five miles per hour. What is the speed of the current in the river? So I'm going to call the river's current C. And what we want to think about here is we want to use that distance equals rate times time equation that we used before. So distance equals rate times time, which means that time is going to equal distance over rate. So we are going to use that here, and we're going to create an equation. So I know that his distance going with the current okay, is 16 miles. So we're going to do 16 over um, his rate at still water is 5, and we know that if he's traveling with the current, that that rate is going to help him. So it's going to be 5 plus C. Okay, and then I'm going to wait here to come back and fill that in, and then I'm going to leave a little space, okay? And then we know that um, going against the current, he traveled six miles, and we know that that's going to be five minus C because he's going opposite the current. Now, I also said that this going against the current was, a, was an hour longer so it's going to be the with the current plus one would equal opposite the current. Okay, so now that we have that set up, we can solve this. So let's use a different color here. So my common denominator, let's make it five plus C times five minus C. So this one needs a five plus C. This one needs both. And this one needs a 5 minus C. Okay. So I'm going to distribute here. So I have 16 times 5 would be 80. Oh, and I can cross off my denominator because they're all the same. So 80 minus 16C plus, I'm going to foil these. And they're um, difference of two squares, so it's just going to be plus 25 minus c squared equals 30 plus 6c. So now I'm going to get this all over to the right-hand side so I can make the c squared positive. So this would become c squared plus 22c minus 75. And then we can factor that and say c plus 25 
and C minus 3. So that means that we get negative 25 and 3. Well, since this is a real world problem, we know that the rate can't be negative 25. So our only solution would be 3, so that we can say that the current is going at 3 miles per hour. Okay, so that is solving rational um, equations.